Welcome back. So last time you've seen uh, Keith had bonded in these little hard points for where that um, antenna mount is going to be for the GPS. So that's what the result looks like after the peel ply has been removed. And Jeff has now moved on to uh, doing the first of the lower surfaces for the four plane. And this one, as you can see, there has a little channel there that's going to be just purely uh, fiberglass for where the VOR uh, nav antenna is going to live. And this is what that one looks like when it's uh, all finished and under the vacuum bag. So that's the uh, left hand side lower surface there for the four plane. And next up would be the right hand side one. So he's not wasting any time getting those uh, flying surfaces done. And in the middle of the week Jeff picked up a pneumatic rivet gun. So he's gone and um, riveted the hinges onto the rudders there as you can see. And also onto uh, the ailerons. So things are really moving along with those control surfaces, having them pretty much done. Still little things to do on them, but it's nice to have um, you know, flying surfaces like that pretty much completed, just ready to you know, be attached to the wings when they're ready, and the wings and the winglets. And back onto the doors, here you can see we've bonded in these little brass bushings that hold the pins that um, support the door handles from the outside, allow them to sort of uh, move in and out and uh, the rods that connect those up uh, have the little uh, arm on them that I had Brit weld on there um, a week or so ago. And I'm sure you guys are all looking at these linkages thinking that there's no way in hell that that's going to work, but actually you're wrong. Um, we actually got it working yesterday and I'll show you some detailed video of it next time. And these are strike plates that I had Brit um, weld up for us after we modified the ones that we would bought. Um, and these are for the nose hatch. So that can sort of lock into place and there's the cable mechanism with the little pins there that made up to those strike plates. So um, Keith's been the one tasked with getting that bonded into the nose hatch. And meanwhile Jeff's got the now wing molds, the large ones uh, out and primed those uh, ready to be laid up. As you can see there that's one of the lower skins and so it's got the primer on there and a little bit of the black at the front there is where it was masked off. Um, where it's going to be bonded to another surface and likewise here the black area there is uh, one that didn't need to get primer on it so that's the other three molds there the, the lower one and the two upper ones on the left and the right there so the next step with those is to get them uh, marked out where the core is going to be and have the core cut and then start um, cutting out and measuring or measuring and cutting out uh, for the fabric so those can be laid up so that's super exciting and here you can see Keith has marked out where his hard points are going to be for those um, little latches there for the nose hatch. So he's getting ready, to, he's got the hard points made already. I think actually Jeremy made those. And so he's just going to cut the core out there and lay those in and do a layup. And back on the doors, uh, there's a hard point there that uh, just needs a layup over that. And that's for the last little bell crank there that hooks the door handle up to the main quadrant. So those are coming along nicely. And here Keith is bonding in the hard points for where those actual strike plates mount up to there in the nose section. So you've got the little pins on the door um, that have hard points and then strike plates um, have hard points there inside the nose so they can mate up to each other. And there's also a hard point there for where the handle is going to be attached to. And a short while later, this is back on the hatch, he has the hard point there. Um, put into the core or cut into the core and a little bit of carbon fiber there ready to be laid up over each of those and by the magic of television here it is uh, the next morning got it all the layup done and he's actually just in the process right now just um, exposing those holes for the hard point there and we put a little bit of clay in there he's just clearing that out the clay stops resin sort of filling into the threads there and here's Zach in the process of getting um, one of the lower skins there for uh, the four plane ready to trim it uh, after it came out of the mold. So it's moving along nicely with those. And Keith yet again is just um, actually mounting the hardware now for the nose hatch. As you can see that's kind of how those are going to live there. He's just got temporary bolts in there right now. We're going to get some shorter ones. Unfortunately, the ones that you can buy at Spruce, they don't go short enough, so we may just have to go with regular hardware or something like that. Um, anyway, moving along. 
And after we got the door handles uh, sorted out and working, uh, we passed the door skins on to Zach to have him uh, just trim those back because they were hadn't been like fully trimmed back to the edge yet. So he's working on that. And as you can see, uh, Jeff and Devin are in the process of uh, laying out the core there for the wing skin mold. And Jeff has uh, snapped some lines on the mold there so he knows exactly where the spars are and where the core needs to live. And he's got the... Um, that scored core there for the leading edge because it can curve around the upper surface there and he's using just a regular core there for the trailing edges and now that most of the core is cut there is actually in the process of cutting out the uh, carbon fiber there for the skins and this is a different one that we haven't seen yet this is a, a biax that he's using which is really good for doing wing skins because it comes in um, a, a layup there that you can basically lay up where you don't have to lay it on the 45 so you can just take it off the roll and pretty much um, do the full skin in one section there without having to do any overlays or anything like that and given that we got the uh, door locks operational it was time to put the doors on and uh, see if all the, the pins and the hooks match up so that's a bit of a challenge that we still have to face and uh, as you can see here Jim's in the process of getting things organized for that and you'll see more on that next week and here Keith is just doing a little bit of last minute sanding there just to finish off on that nose hatch door just so it fits uh, nice and snugly back in the fuselage and I'll have a good little demo video of that next week as well and back to the engine one of the things that I was thinking about um, with you know respect to you know what I talked about last time with the too much boost and not enough fuel being used um, I actually had uh, Jeremy uh, open up the intake there and there was this butterfly valve in there that I thought might be coming closed and so we actually took that out completely and I wanted to run the engine just to see if it made any difference in performance and uh, so this is me just getting the engine running there uh, Friday afternoon yesterday and I uh, just wanted to just quickly run it up to about, you know, 33, 3400 RPM and just note the power settings and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, so here's, um, oh, while that's running, I'll just give you a bit of an idea of what's sort of going through my mind in terms of those numbers we've seen before. So that last time, the actual fuel burn that we used um, was at 3.7 gallons an hour. That was accurate. And we think the horsepower was pretty much somewhere between sort of 77 and 90 horsepower going out there and that kind of makes sense for the pitch that the prop is set out. I've looked at some different calculations and it sort of all matches in. But what was out of place was how much boost was running. There was 9.3 pounds of boost and the engine definitely doesn't need 9.3 pounds of boost to generate you know 77 or 90 horsepower somewhere in between there. So what my thinking is and maybe people can and people who you know have something really intelligent to say about this and know what they're talking about more than what I am uh, maybe you can pipe in on this. So here's what I'm thinking. If you have um, X amount of fuel going into the engine so it um, you know, can power the prop at t um, with the engine spinning at 2700 RPM and generating, say, let's just say 90 horsepower and under um, a certain amount of boost, if all of a sudden you added like twice the amount of boost and you didn't change the fuel and you didn't change the load on the prop or anything like that, what would the engine do um, with that extra boost is my question would it just sort of ignore it because um, that's what I'm thinking with the fact that we have the compound turbo we're generating more boost than the engine needs and given that it, the throttle is controlling exactly how much fuel is delivered unlike a gasoline engine you know where you need to monitor the air fuel ratio in in this case you know we're putting a set amount of fuel in for a given throttle thing and we're, we're getting a lot more boost generated than is necessary so that's why I think there's this discrepancy that I'm getting more boost uh, showing than what the actual fuel is being used and ultimately what I want to do is um, adjust the pitch of the prop and uh, put a little bit more load on it for the same RPM and then take some numbers and stuff but anyway if you guys want to pipe in uh, in the comments and let me know what you think about that whole theory and um, while you're doing that, let me tell you what happened here. So I ran the engine up to 3500 RPM and then I brought it back down to about 2700 RPM and then right after that I heard a noise and I very quickly shut the engine down and it turns out that what happened is um, the it looks like what's happened, because I just left the shop after that, um, it looks like what's happened is the uh, uh, stake nut 
that holds the prop shaft in there and had come a bit loose and um, the prop shaft had actually moved a little bit like maybe a half an inch or something like that had moved out so needless to say I need to sort of uh, open that back up again um, even though you know we're getting rid of that whole upper drive system I still do want to be able to run the engine while we're waiting, waiting for the new um, redrive to be done um, anyway, so I'm going to have to open that up again and see what happened there, but I have a feeling that stake nut, um, the little locking thing in there maybe broke off or sheared off or something like that, and the nut started coming loose, so um, um, it was a bit of a problem, but anyway, not a big deal. Um, so that's another project on on the list of things to do um, for next week, but uh, anyway... Uh, and then on the doors, I'll have uh, some good video next week showing you exactly how the doors, the door locks actuate, because uh, that's exciting that they actually work, and you can just pull the handle in and out, and it actuates all those locks. So basically, um, you know, seven pin locks and three hook locks all get actuated nicely with it, with very little effort as well. It actually worked out really amazingly, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, anyway, that's our update for this week, and again, um, put your uh, your comments um, below there for what you think about my little hypotheses about the uh, too much boost not being uh, used for anything. So uh, we'll see you next week on uh, Tuesday.